Have you ever been watching a video and thought to yourself, I wonder how they did that color grade? Well, that thought's not gonna cross your mind anymore because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to steal a color grade from a video and drag it over to your video. That way you can get the exact same color grade of a video that you're watching. It's a pretty simple three-step process, so make sure to watch it all the way through the end. That way you can get the exact result that you want. But before we get into the video, I wanna take a second and let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It just recently came out. I'll have it linked down in the description. It's by far the best way to get Shake inside of your After Effects. And best of all, there's a seven day free trial that way you can try it out 100% risk free, cancel at any time, but I guarantee you're gonna love it. But that's enough talking for right now. Let's go ahead and get into Premiere Pro and steal that color grid. So here in Premiere Pro, I was watching the new Benny X Yeet music video, go again. And I thought the color grid was super, super fire. So I went ahead and made a non-color graded version. That way we can take it and steal the color grade and apply it to our footage. So in Premiere Pro, we have our clip. It's not color graded, just like how yours would be. And we are going to go to the Lumetri Color tab, which a lot of you guys probably are super familiar with, but you might not have known about this one feature that makes stealing color grades insanely easy. So there's a thing called comparison view. So you're gonna go ahead and check that. And then you're gonna need to download the footage of the video you wanna go ahead and steal. So for us, it was this Benny X Go Again music video. I thought it looked super, super fire, the color grade throughout. So you can go ahead and copy this link and paste it into a tool called 4K Video Downloader. I'll have it linked in the description. It's free, I don't pay for it. I'm not affiliated with it, but it's super helpful. It's how I'm able to download videos off YouTube and make tutorials on them. So once you've gone ahead and downloaded your video, import it into your Premiere Pro timeline and then find out where you want, like where the color grades the best in your opinion. So you can see, I really liked this scene here. I thought the green looked really cool. So I went ahead and made a marker and you can see the time code says, 3320, that's gonna be important. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind in a second. So then let's go to our footage where we wanna apply the color grid, click that comparison view, and then you can see this thing that says apply match will pop up. And you remember how I said that number 3320? You're gonna go ahead and type that in here. So that's why if you don't know where it's at, I highly suggest you just put a marker there. You can bring your playhead and then in the top left, it will say your time code. So it's 3320. So let's go ahead and say we didn't have that typed in already. You can go 33 and then 20. So let's go ahead and say we didn't have that typed in. I would just drag my playhead till I see 3320 and you can get pretty close and then you can just change the number. So 32, so we need to go 3320. And just like that, we're at the time code that we want. And now let's go to our footage where we wanna apply. And then we're gonna click this thing that says apply match. So it's gonna do a lot in the background and it's basically gonna take the color grade from the video you wanna take and apply it to your footage. So you can see it does probably about 95% of the work. You can see there's some slight differences in the color grade and I'm gonna show you how to tweak it. That way you can get the exact same color grade and then I'm gonna take it a step further and show you how to personalize it. That way you can make your own version of the color grade. So I already think this looks pretty good. I can tell that it is a little warmer than this one and there's a little bit more contrast in the original version. So let's go to our basic corrections. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just try to match the contrast level. So make it a little bit heavier in contrast. Maybe bring up the highlights, bring down the blacks a little bit, up the whites, and then the shadows. And as you can see, the color's off just a little bit. This one's a little bit more warm. So we're gonna bring in the blues a little bit, maybe even a little bit more. And now we're getting a lot closer. And if you don't really understand what you're looking for to change it to get it closer, a tool that I like using is Lumetri Scopes. It's gonna just help you understand the color. And for some reason, mine's been bugging, but you can just go ahead and change the size. And you can see there are two different videos. So on the left, this is the Lumetri Scope for the video on the left, the original one. And then you can see there's like a line here. And this is the Lumetri Scope for the video on the right. And as you can see, there's a lot more red here, like this pinkish red in the shadows. Cause basically this is the shadows, this is the midtones, and this is the highlights. It's basically a projection of all the colors uh, based on luminance. So you can see there's a lot more pink overlapping this blue down here. So a thing we can do is go to our color wheel. And since we are talking about the shadows here, we're gonna use this thing called the shadows. And we're gonna try to add a little bit more of that pink to that blue area. So you can kind of just click around and see what it does. You can see if you go here, it's obviously separating the green way too much. See if you click here, it's like separating everything. So you're probably gonna wanna stay around the center, but we wanna find a way to add a little bit more pink in that bottom area. So you wanna just try your best to line it up as best as possible. 
and you can go ahead and drag that around until we get something closer to what we want. So that's getting closer. You can even go ahead and play around with the midtones and the highlights. For us in this video, the shadows is gonna be the thing that's gonna impact it the most, but you can see how now we're getting a lot closer to what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and close the scopes make this significantly bigger. And I think the only thing it's really lacking right now is actually a little bit of warmth in the midtones. You can kind of see his hand, so maybe some more saturation as well. And maybe just a little bit less cool. And then it's also just losing a little bit of that blacks and the darks. And I'm actually just gonna bring in a little bit more of that warmth here, and then probably go to the curves editor and just remove it from midtones just slightly. Now, one thing I like to do is be inspired by color grades and not just completely copy them. It is gonna look different on your footage, especially if you're not using the exact same video. Like we're taking the color grade from this video and applying it to this video. So it looks like we're taking, but a lot of times when you have different footage, it's going to look different regardless. But a thing that I use that really stylizes is my footage that I you know, think is part of my style is this plugin called Dehancer Pro. I use it all the time. I'll have it linked down below. It is an affiliate link, so I do get a small percentage if you decide to go ahead and get it, but I genuinely would talk about it and use it even if I didn't have an affiliate link. I use it all the time in my videos, and I think it just gives a really stylized look. So even just dragging it onto a clip like this, I think gives it a really unique look. I kind of like a little bit of desaturated and grungy, especially with this like yeet aesthetic. I think this looks good, but you can go ahead and play around with a bunch of the different film presets and get some stylized looks. I think that's one thing that Dehan does really well is just the the film aesthetic it's probably one of the best plugins for getting authentic looking film without having to really dive into learning about color grading so i like adding bloom in my footage a little bit we'll probably turn that down a little bit uh the impact down to like 20 and then also the halation i think looks really really good we're gonna go ahead and turn on the mask mode and bring up the amplify a little bit because I just want it to be a little bit more noticeable here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply one of these film presets. I do really like this Fuji color here. It's a little bit more of like less of a green, but I think it looks good. You can go ahead and just click around. It's one of my favorite things about this plugin is just clicking around. You can see some of them are a little bit more intense than others, but finding one that's pretty chill. These Kodak ones, the Portra 400 and 800 are some of my go-tos a lot of the time. Even the 160 looks good as well and then Fuji Film's also a really good one. I think the C200 is kind of what I'm looking for. And then even going back and adding another Lumetri color effect on top of all this, just to tweak the colors a little bit more, you can go in and play with the temperature and the tint to get it a little closer, play with the contrast here. And you can see how you go from taking a color grade to then going ahead and applying your own stuff and being inspired by a color grade. And that's pretty much the video. That's how you can go ahead and take a color grade from another video, apply to yours, and then be inspired and turn it into something unique. I'll have everything that I talked about linked down in the description, but that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.